Even though the NFL season is about to start, there are still a bunch of quality free agents out there. So in today's video, I'm going to go over the top five available free agents. So first off, the fifth best free agent available is Teddy Bridgewater. So there are several quarterbacks out there that you've heard of, such as Teddy Bridgewater, of course, Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, and a few others that five years ago were starters and were looked upon pretty highly. But nowadays, they've all fallen off and their backups, their free agents still looking for a job. And out of all of them, I would say that Teddy Bridgewater is the best out there. If you're going for the biggest upside, then of course you have to go Carson Wentz because he's younger, he's semi healthier, I guess, even though that's a weird thing to say about Carson Wentz. And of course, if you've seen his past, he was the best in the past, so he can probably be the best now if he put it all together. But he hasn't, and teammates just don't like him. I love you too, Jay Bird! You all don't like that dude. So, a mixture of those. And he's never been a backup quarterback before. So I don't know if a team would really want to sign him in the middle of August with him being a new backup. So with all this being said, Teddy Bridgewater is the best out there because one, he would be a bad starter, but he's a really good backup. If you looked last year in the games he played, he was good. And then unfortunately he got hurt. He got a concussion and he hurt his hand. And if he didn't do those, he probably would have started about five or six games and he would have even played for the Dolphins in the playoff game. And who knows, maybe they would have won. I mean, last year he even had a game where he threw over 300 yards. And I know you're probably saying, hey, he has some of the best wide receivers out there. And yes, this is true. He did have Tyree Kill and Waddle. But even though he had good weapons, he was able to utilize them. And I think a team like, let's say, the Cincinnati Bengals could really use signing him. That way, if Joe Burrow missed a few weeks, especially with his calf injury, then Teddy Bridgewater can hold the ship up, maybe win one game or two, possibly, because they do have good weapons, and he's consistent. You know what you're getting from him. Next up at number four is Ezekiel Elliott. So in his several years with the Cowboys, he has always been a very strong, good running back. And he, of course, with many of these players, he has fallen off. But if you look at last year's stats, he did not have a ton of yards per carry with 3.79. And really, you'd hope for at least four out of a running back. So his yards per carry was not great. But a lot of this is because they used him at the goal line. He had 12 touchdowns last year. And you probably noticed this if you had Pollard on your fantasy football team. You're like, why does Elliott always get the touchdowns? But that's because he was really good on the goal line. And he still played a lot last year. In 10 of the 17 games, he had over 50% of the offensive snaps, and this even includes two games where he was hurt. So it's really 10 out of 15 where he was on the field over half the time. If you're expecting an explosive running back, he's going to get a ton of yards. He's not your guy, but if you're looking for someone on the goal line and somebody who can pass protect really well, then Ezekiel Elliott is the guy for you. Then for number three is Dalton Risner. So I know you don't know who this is. I didn't know who it was until I was doing some research, but he's an offensive lineman. He is 28 years old. He played for the Broncos last year and he was solid. He only allowed three sacks and he only had one penalty. He specialized in pass protection and was not very good in run protection, but in today's NFL, that's what you want if you say, give me one or the other, you're always gonna pick pass protection because you throw in this league. And honestly, this is about all you can say. He's an offensive lineman. He's mildly young at 28 years old. He's good at pass protection. And uh, yeah, he's out there. So he is my third ranked guy and he is seen as the best offensive lineman available on the market. The second best free agent out there is Jadavian Clowney. So he's a huge name, I know you know him. If not from anything else, you know him from his huge hit back in college right here, where he just absolutely destroyed a dude. Wow, Michigan at the 41, what a hit! Balls free, on the ground! And in the NFL, he's been a mild bust, I would say. I mean, bust might be harsh, but he was not been what he was lived up to be. So he was the number one pick several years ago, and 
honestly, he's been a bit one-dimensional. He's mainly had a power move and was not very flexible, so it didn't translate super well into the NFL. But with that being said, he is still a very high-end backup defensive lineman. Your team's probably not going to win a lot of games if he's one of your starting defensive linemen, but as a backup, you'd be very well off. And last year, he only had three sacks, but he did miss five games due to injury. So three sacks in 12 games, if you extrapolate it out, he could have about five sacks, which is not bad for a backup. He also graded pretty well against the run, and really for going with backup linemen, he's great. However, one downside to Clowney is that he's asking for a lot of money. He's been looking for about $10 million per year, and that's probably not going to happen. He won't be one of those guys where you see on like the veteran minimum or anything like that. He will probably get around $8 million, which is what he got last year. But essentially, he's probably still out there with a mixture of two reasons. One, that he wants more money, and two, he probably doesn't want to play in training camp and in the preseason. So they can't fine you for skipping training camp if you just haven't signed with anybody, and that's probably a lot of why he hasn't gone. And the other downside with Clowney is while he is good when he's on the field, he has got injured a lot over the past few years. And then before I get to number one, I'm going to throw in one extra, and that's largely because he's not really a free agent, but he kind of is. So it depends on how you see it, but Isaiah Rogers is my extra throw-in. And the reason is, yes, he's not on a team, he's young, and he's good. On the downside, he was one of the players who was gambling with the Colts. So he did worse than others. A lot of players got suspended for six games because they bet within the NFL facilities, or even this can also count if they were at the team hotel when they were traveling. So if you did that, you bet on another sport, that's six games. But if you bet on the NFL, you get put on this indefinite list. It's thought that they'll probably come back next year with a one-year suspension, but who knows? I mean, the NFL could easily go really hard on these guys. They're not well-known at all, and the NFL is above any one player. So they could really lay down the law on gambling and just say, you're never coming back, or they could be back next year. But I would say what Rodgers did was worse than anybody else, because he did several bets but the one that's the most well known is he bet on player props for rushing yards for the Colts. And he won. So he probably had some inside information on potentially the plays that were going to get called or, you know, who just was going to run the ball more. And he bet on it. He won $1,000 and he's cost himself hundreds of thousands and possibly millions. I do feel a little bad for him because he was a sixth round pick in 2020 so he's never made that much money in his career he's made less than two million dollars and that's before taking out taxes and agent fees and he's only 25 so he was probably going to sign a big contract soon and now it's really in doubt but with all that being said you know technically he is a free agent and last year he was really rising up through the ranks he started the year without playing that much but by the end of the year, he played a decent amount and was very good. PFF ranked him 5th best out of corners who played at least 250 coverage snaps. And that is out of 106 corners, so being top 5 is pretty great. And to make it even worse for the Colts and for Isaiah Rogers, he was ranked in this article as the Colts' most unrated player and was listed as a key cornerback for the Colts' secondary. So, while he was on the rise, now not so much and then finally the number one best free agent i think everyone agrees on this like my last video where i'll link here of the worst contracts in the nfl where i think everybody agreed on the worst contract there was some debate in the comments over the rest but i think everyone agreed on the worst with this one i think everyone will agree as well with the best free agent out there as of today is dalvin cook so we all know Dalvin Cook from being on the Minnesota Vikings. He's been there for a long time, since 2017, which is a long time for running backs in the current market. And he's always been good. You probably know him from fantasy, where you've been drafting him with a top three pick for the past several years. He's always been a guy who can catch a lot of passes and was also good at running the ball. However, if you look over the past three years, he has fallen off a little bit. He went from five yards per carry in 2020 
to 4.65 yards per carry in 2021 to 4.44 yards per carry in 2022. So mathematicians here, he went down each year the past three years. However, 4.44 yards per carry is still good. The mark, as I said earlier, is about four yards per carry for what an NFL offense is going for. So 4.44, still above that. However, you've also seen his explosive runs go down. So in 2020, he had 46 explosive runs, which is a run of 10 plus yards. In 2021, he had 36 explosive runs. And then last year, he only had 30 explosive runs. And if you watch the games, you probably saw that his explosiveness has kind of slowly gone away. And especially in an offense with Justin Jefferson, who really just wants to throw the ball all the time, paying a running back a lot of money just didn't make any sense, and the Vikings were able to save $10 million by cutting him. So if you say, where is he going to go now? Well, there are a lot of options. But the top two seem to be the Dolphins or the Jets, um, both good options. It could be that he's waiting to see who will offer him even more money. It could be he's waiting for a potential injury or holdout situation like Jonathan Taylor, or that he just doesn't want to play in training camp. But I personally hope he either goes to the Dolphins and helps that explosive offense or goes to the Bills, even though they don't have any money. If they can figure out a way to get him there, he could be with his brother, be like a weird dynamic duo and help them push for a Super Bowl win. So anyways, thanks for watching the video. Leave a like, subscribe, comment about the video. If you love it, if you hate it, I don't really care either way. It helps my uh, video do better if you comment. So yeah, and see you around.